Hello and welcome to Inside the Scottish Poetry Library, a video brought to you by the Scottish Poetry Library as part of the Scottish Book Trust Book Week Scotland 2020. And as the plaque says over the door, Sic iter ad aster. Thus, one journeys to the stars. I'm Jeanette Ayashi. I'm a Scottish Algerian poet. I shipped over here from Stirling in 2006 to do my Master's in Creative Writing and I haven't left since. Something about the literary prowess of the city that just seems to hold you hostage steals you in to make roots. I'll be taking you on a whistle-stop tour of the Scottish Poetry Library where we'll learn a little bit about its history and the collections it houses. As a little treat, we'll be hearing a couple of readings from two wonderful Edinburgh-based poets, Louise Peterkin and R.J. Arkhipov. During the Edinburgh Festival in 1981, the Poetry Society from London had a stall in the Assembly Rooms. It was there that Scottish Poetry Library founder Tessa Ransford overheard an American voice asking, where is the Poetry Library in Edinburgh? And the rest, they say, is history. Fast forward two years, many funding bids and a great deal of work later. The idea in Tessa's head that a Scottish poetry library should exist had suddenly grown into something very real. A magic had been stirred. On the night of the 23rd of January 1984, 300 people fought their way through a blizzard to attend the SPL opening party at St Cecilia's Hall. They tucked their hands into their pockets from the cold and perked up their ears and creaked open their hearts. On the 6th of February, the SPL's first premises in Tweeddale Court opened for business with rug and desk and electric heater and four shelves of donated books to make up the stock all under the benign gaze of a bust of the poet Helen Cruikshank. The library proved as popular as Tessa had imagined, and by the late 90s, just on the millennia's cusp, the SPL had already outgrown its home, like a tree that takes over a garden, brimming with the most delicious fruit. The premises on Tweeddale Court were sold, the books were packed into boxes for their short, tumbling journey down the Royal Mile, and in March that year, staff bade farewell to the old library, and then set about the huge task of setting up shop in the new building, designed by the architect Malcolm Fraser. The official opening followed in June, with Dr Robin Marsak now at the helm. Thus, the SPL entered the new century, with decorum, bravado and grace. The library now has a collection of over 46,000 poetry-related items and is the only purpose-built poetry library in Europe, possibly the world. One of the more interesting features of the entranceway and reception area is the resting place of our book sculptures, gifted to us over the years by an anonymous sculpture, the notoriety of a ghost. There are five of these sculptures. The first is the poetry. It was discovered by the librarians as a surprise gift. According to the anonymous note it was left with, the sculpture was inspired by the library's Twitter handle, by Leaves We Live, and it forms a quote from A Trace of Wings by Edwin Morgan. Also on display are A Child's Garden, The Cap and Gloves, and Preparing to Fly, as well as a paper flower. One thing you'll never find out, though, is the identity of the artist, who still remains anonymous to this day, quick and meticulous, like a serial killer of shredded paper. And if you'd like to follow us further into the collection, we have here a selection of children's poetry. And the rest continues upstairs. And as we begin to enter the centre, we have the anthologies, which heave all the way around the building here to where the individual poet's collection starts. And it wraps all the way around the building. Today, we have a very special treat for you in the corner. We have an Edinburgh-based poet, R.J. Arkhipov, ready to give you a reading. The Sculptor. He fixed me with an earthen gaze and truthward his caress, bestilled my errant youth in clay, immortalized the flesh. Near yesterday's bereft of span, reaped a suspicion sown, and wounds a bloom my sinew sang. Am I the poet or the poem? There are so many words that come to mind when I think of the Scottish Poetry Library. Behind me are the collections of poets who write in Scots, in Gaelic, in Irish Gaelic, and even in Welsh. Being from Wales, there's a word that sticks in my mind when I think of this place, 
Kenevin. It doesn't translate very well into English, but it captures a, a sort of feeling of familiarity, an old haunt, a habitat. Here we can see the glass balustrade etched with phrases from the landscape poetry of Scotland and the phrase from Ian Crichton Smith's sonnet, this house, this poem, this fresh hypothesis. My personal history embalmed in this building is that I once used it as a haven when my first child, Aria, started nursery in 2011 right outside this very window. And for three days a week, I would listen to her play in the playground outside and I was inside finding myself uh, in a break from full throttle domestic motherhood. The light here filters in beautifully in the summer. I love being so nearby to her. That instinct to protect was fierce. A separation from a tiny sprite that just learnt to write the letters in her name. And here I was learning new letters myself in the meantime as I waited with a harvest of poetry stacked around me like being trapped in a Monet painting when he was deliriously driven by the shifting of light over landscape. And all those haystacks he obsessed over are giant wraps of books and the honeybee doesn't bother you and the playground bell will siren you back to reality in a tick. There's plenty more to discover on this floor. We've got some poetry, theory and criticism, some more of the children's collection and some backdated periodicals. And this SPL space also twins up as a function space for reading. So imagine the stacks of these rows of books piled all the way back, lots of chairs and the poet performing their wizardry of words at the front. Roll up, big top in view like a yummy mirage, scalloped, candy striped, as good as any church, in scale and height for the swooping, the twirling, the leaping and curving, for the love of God, the love of the falling. The good folk here fit you for your leotard, Instructed all day in the fine arts, juggling, knife throwing, tight rope walking. You know now balance is an act of sheer faith, so spread those arms out on the style of a cross, on a frail bridge above, on the back of a horse. After work there is much to enjoy, a consignment of massive animals, the arc stink of dark and straw. Lie with the strong man all night long if you care to. Savour the taste of his body, his shiny skin, his colonel blimp face. Console the associates of the sideshow as they hover towards your implicit grace. Soothe them, let the conjoined twins envelop you like a moth. Be fearless as you walk that line. Straight across, don't look up or down. And don't succumb to your nightmare. You know the one where you feel the ground, the trailers, the skin of the tents tremble and you run outside to see a legion of nuns come to collect you, come to take you home, lapping at the horizon like an army of penguins, in their vengeance, sister, in their thousands. Um, up here uh, in this space, um, I feel excitement to be back again. The excitement of uh, just being in a, a reading and an event and sharing it with people. But there's also another side to it where you just quietly browse the stacks and just being on my own and enjoying the solitude, enjoying the peace and quiet and contemplation and then um, the wide variety of books that they have on the shelves here. Upstairs, the library has a special meeting room which houses our poetry pamphlet collection. All the pamphlets you can see in these green boxes. Roughly 5,600 of them are publicly accessible and many available to borrow. This is possibly our fastest growing collection. The SPL has a number of unusual items in its special collections. Here we have a few examples of work from Machato Press and Entropy Books. 
Mishato Press is run by artist and concrete poet Thomas A. Clark and Laurie Clark. The SPL is the only institution in the country to hold its full archive. And I actually shared class with Thomas on the Masters and about 13 years ago. We also house work by Entropy Books, run by poet and artist Barbara A. Morton. She produces limited edition artist books, fine art and pamphlets using traditional bookbinding, letterpress and screen printing techniques. There's plenty more to be discovered in the SPL collections. But the library doesn't just house the collection, the staff make the collection accessible to you. Even during these difficult times, this space still continues to function with steadfast offerings and staff nearby. You can easily become a member of the library and begin borrowing books for free and safely immediately. The click and collect service is so easy to use and it has all of the necessary precautions in place to make borrowing and sharing poetry risk free and secure at the moment. Simply jump online, click the books that you want and come in to collect them. These are the books you requested, we've issued them to you already and uh, just enjoy them now. Perfect, thanks Jill. And if you don't want to come in and collect them, we also offer a postal service. So out over the Royal Mile it flies. On meeting a fox, we walk the humble bones of Georgian houses, clubs shut and we pay our toll to the bouncers who beckon us into the cast iron claws of the city, drunk and sore from dancing, the moon a satellite with a cloudy reception. The cuffed link streets of the old town, a derelict chronology of sepulchral windows that record our presence with cubic eyes of temporal surveillance. And out of the rows of letterboxes that grit their gold teeth, waiting for more than paper feasts, a fox releases its arrow flight onto the pavement. Under the verso flame of street lamp, I stare into its human eyes, wanting it to trust me, move closer so I could stroke its coarse pelt stained with fumes and brambles, and finger the flat skull down over its vixen muzzle. It was ready to pounce, but I was drawn to it for answers. The girl behind me, upholstered in oyster and ivory, setting her compass on the dark star of my bed. A cunning shapeshifter, surrounded by spirit guides, her Tanzanite eyes more fox than the fox itself, as if they had swapped for that very moment to offer me something only in vulpine camouflage. We follow behind doors, where couples sleep on university degrees and catch tears of blossom on their gorgeous tongues. We recline into rogue chat of neo-evolution, no mixer and a kiss. And then she waits until I am sleeping before she takes off her clothes. I wake with my heart racing, her gaze fixed on my dreams. She is caught, she frightens, and her shadow tail scurries into the dawn. So that brings us to the end of our tour. I hope you've enjoyed your visit to the Scottish Poetry Library, whether it's your first time ever or your first time in a while. I'd like to thank the Scottish Book Trust for supporting this event and I hope that you're all having a great Book Week Scotland. It's such a special place for me and I hope that it can be for you too.